Hey everyone, welcome to Shield and Brick Show 2020. I'm Graham Hancock, presenting for Brick Alley Look and Locomotive, and we're here with Mike Rayno. So, Mike, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, surviving lockdown. Just had a my, my five-year-old daughter's just gone into lockdown again for two weeks because her, her teacher's got COVID. But other than that, pretty good. Well, we go with a virtual event to make up for the fact that we can't be the real one, right? Yeah. So um, what Lego build have you got to share with us, Mike? Um, well, I've got a, uh, a Teen Titans Go lenticular. Um, and uh, to explain what a lenticular is, if, if people don't know, I don't, I don't know if you, if you remember when you were a kid, you might have had one of those little rulers with dinosaurs on and you tilt it one way and it's one picture, you tilt it the other way and it's another picture. So... Uh, I created this uh, Teen Titans Go Lenticular, so that's Raven, if you uh, look at it like that, but then if I tilt it, then oh wow, we end up with, uh, on, let me get that in, we end up with fire, um, Starfire. And, uh, that is awesome. If you see it from the front, it uh, doesn't, doesn't look like a whole lot of anything. Um, and as you can tell, it's a pretty big piece. It's about um, 100 studs in length by, I think, 52 studs in depth. And I uh, actually created some brackets on the back out of, uh, with the help of some uh, Lego Dimensions pieces so that I could hang, hang it on the wall. Oh, yeah, that's the Lego Dimensions base, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So, and it's part of uh, how I justify having a having a Lego addiction. It's that uh, every now and again I I build stuff for my my two girls, and it, it justifies it. And at the moment they're nine and five, but I'm a little bit worried about when they get older, and I'm still buying and building Lego, and I can't blame it on them anymore. So, are they the Teen Titans Go fans? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, my nine-year-old used to absolutely love them. Uh, I don't know if she does so much anymore, but I think my, my five-year-old does as well. But I'd, I'd actually um, built a similar one. I, I used to live in um, Los Angeles and I was a member of uh, the lug out there. And I built one out there that was uh, two different um, My Little Ponies. So you tilted it one way and it was, uh, I don't know, Pinkie Pie or someone and tilted the other way and it's uh, rar Rarity. But the, the thing with these is uh, they work best if they're mounted on a wall near a mirror. Because then if someone walks into the room and they see the picture on the wall as one thing and then they notice it in the mirror and it's something else and they're like, well, what's happening? So uh, that, 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 that creates quite a good, uh, good effect. And how did you choose which two characters to put on this one? Um, well... A lot of my builds come down, come down to what's in the pick-a-brick wall at, at the Lego store. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm the most creative of, of builders or the best builders or anything. So, uh, for example, when, I'm, when I lived in Los Angeles, uh, pink bricks were, were fairly new or, or, the, or the, new, new pink, the Friends line was fairly new and you couldn't get that many pieces in pink and there weren't many in, in the sets. But at the time, the pick a brick wall at the Lego store, they had three or four different pink pieces. And I got a whole load of them. And I managed to make my, my daughter, who was four at the time, a, a sort of three foot by three foot pink castle. And, uh, and I liked that. I loved it because it wasn't the best castle anyone's ever built. But I don't think there were many people out there that had managed to make a pink castle just because of uh, how few pieces there were and, and how new they were. Yeah. So, and that's kind of what what drives my choice for that drove my choice for the for which team titans to use because uh the pick a brick wall a while back they had so i don't know if you know this is all built out of uh, the lenticular part of it is built out of cheese wedges oh wow uh, which is the the one by one by two thirds slopes or one by two and two thirds slopes and uh, the pick a brick wall had um yellow ones on the wall, they also had orange ones on the wall, which basically drove why we have yellow and orange stripes on it. And uh, 
they also had black, which is why having Raven made sense because I was able to get a, a, a huge amount of black ones fairly cheaply. Um, and then as, as for the other colors, they had to be bought from uh, Ricklink, which uh, isn't the cheapest, buying small Lego pieces isn't, isn't the cheapest way to, to buy Lego. Um, Although when you're buying them in that quantity, maybe it works out a little bit better. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe, but uh, that's, that's a lot of studs that you have to cover. So whatever 50 times 100 is, uh, was that 5,000 studs? Um, so that's quite a lot of cheese wedges that, that you need to cram on to. Well, how long did it take you to, to lay them all down? Um, and it took a while, and actually one, one of the other things that, that drove, going back to the pick a brick wall, is, is a decorative edge here is, is one by one round bricks. And uh, again, that, that's a piece that was on the pick a brick wall. And, and I think I must have gone to the Lego store about four times and thought, oh, wow, that's cool. One by one round um, bricks. I, I probably need some of them. And I, probably, and I think I did that about four times. So now I've got a sack of these things. Um, so I just used them to try and use some of them up. And actually, this is plate sandwiched, sandwiching one by one round bricks as well, because I thought I'd use as many as I could inside as well. <laughs> um, but uh, as for how long it, it took, it was not, I don't think it was the most difficult of builds. Um, I mean, to make it, I, I basically got a uh, got an image of, of Starfire, shrunk it down to, 48 by 48 pixels uh, dimensions. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I think I just copied that into Excel and then tweak, tweak the colors to, to bring, sort of bake it down to Lego colors. Um, and then just had some formulas in there. So it would tell me how many pieces of how many colors that, that you needed. And again, I'm, I'm sure you can do stuff like this in the Lego apps or the studio IO or whatever it's called pretty easily. But I've, I've never bothered learning any of those things, but I, I love Excel. So most of my builds end up being in Excel one way or the other. Um, so yeah, it wasn't too difficult. It's just uh, then trying to work out what pieces I need and what, what color that isn't going to absolutely break the bank and, and waiting for them from, uh, from, from Brick, uh, Bricklink. But the other, the other thing that was fairly parts intensive as well is uh, I could have used um, base plates on the back here, but I'm not a big fan of base plates just because of how flexible they are. So I ended up using um, 16 by 16 plates and there's a layer of 16 by 16 plates on the back and a layer on the front. So that's like 36 of those. Um, yeah. And they're quite a a sought after commodity in, in my own head, especially these white ones, because those are great for Christmas builds. And and this and when I made, made this, it was before they brought out the, the white base plates as well. Um, but what I'm actually thinking of doing is since they brought out the, um, what are they called, the, the mosaics at, at oh, the yeah. store? Oh yeah, sets, yeah. Yeah, and they've, they've got the specific 16 by 16 bases. So I might um, try and buy a bunch of those at some point and and put and put this on there and free up all my dozens of 30, uh, 16 by 16 plates so I can put them to better use and, and it'll make it a bit lighter and easier to, to hang on a wall. Yeah. Well, they've even got the hanging parts in them as well. Um, so you can do that, right? Yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and I think that'll cut, cut down on the weight massively as well because that's all plates and bricks and things. Um, and I had to, there's a whole load of Technic stuff sandwiched between there to try and give it enough strength to hopefully stay on the wall and not tear itself apart with its own weight. Um, but I guess those mosaic things have been designed specifically for, for that not to happen. So I think that would be a pretty good solution moving forwards. And do you have any tips for people who are thinking of trying to do a Lego mosaic or lenticular? Uh, not really. I, I guess uh, if they, the, the main one would be if they if they want to keep the cost down, keep a, keep an eye on the, the pick a brick wall because they quite often have um, cheese slopes in there of, of, of one colour or another. 
Um, obviously, you need to live near a, a Lego store to be able to do that. Because um, if you were going to try and order them all from, from Bricklink or somewhere, then it's going to be an expensive endeavour. Um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's the main thing, really. Just sort of choo choose your colours wisely. And also, the, and, the, and the bigger you make it, the, the better it's going to look as well. Um, so these guys, Raven and Starfire, are both essentially a 48 by 48 image each. Um, but because the pixels alternate between Starfire and, and Raven, it ends up being 96 studs wide. Uh, and, and I'd have thought that's about the smallest you could make one of these, unless you're having a, a super, super basic picture. I mean, may, maybe a logo or something, a sort of geometric shaped logo would would work quite well, but anything with sort of curved lines or anything like that, I think you need to sort of have, have a bare minimum of 48 by 48, which is probably why Lego chose 48 by 48 to be their, their mosaics that they've just released. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, have you been able to display this particular model at any shows? Um, yeah, I, I, I brought it along to the, I brought it along to Shildon last time. Um, so I think, I think there's a couple of things that drive my Lego building or, or my mocks is, is one being inspired by what I find on the pick of brick wall. And the other thing is, is driven by what homework my daughter has. So I think I brought this along. Um, and uh, I managed to shoehorn in a lot of Lego into her homework. So she was doing something to do with Romans and I made and they had to build a Roman baths. So I built a, a Roman baths for her out of Lego. Um, and I brought that along to the show as well. Um, she just recently had, had a homework where they had to build a, a volcano. Um, and I built her a volcano out of Lego that and you turn a little hidden cog at the back and the volcano erupts and showers all the tiny little dinosaurs at the bottom with transparent orange pieces. Um, we have just uh, done another homework assignment, which was uh, creating um, rules for, for their computer room. You had to come up with 10 rules for the computer room. So I built a little classroom for the computer room and, and, and made these 10 rules as a little vignette in, in Lego. Uh, so again, I don't know if it, it's 100% me being inspired to make stuff for, for my girls, or if, if maybe I feel like I can get away with playing with Lego more, if I can blame it on them. <laughs> and what's your favourite memory of Shilden Brick Show? Um, I don't know if it's a specific memory, really, but uh, I, I think it's just the whole atmosphere of being in, being there. And firstly, just seeing just the incredibly creative stuff that people can create from this medium. Um, but I think almost more importantly, it's just being able to go there and have adult conversations about what's ostensibly a child's toy with, with like-minded people without them thinking I'm a lunatic. Because if I start talking about this stuff with my wife or, or other people I know, then, uh, then you start getting some strange looks. But it's, it's nice just being surrounded by like-minded people with, with an addiction that's uh, equal to mine. That sounds about right, Mike. That sounds like what a lot of people get out of visiting <laughs> Lego events like Shield and Brick Show. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing your build with us. Um, oh, it's absolutely pleasure. amazing. Well, and thanks everyone for watching this video from Shield and Brick Show 2020, put on by Brick Alley Lug and Locomotive. And check out the other videos from Shield and Brick Show 2020 showcasing other amazing Lego builds.